Uh, Mark Zuckerberg says Biden Harris administration pressured Meta to censor COVID-19 content. This is big news. What you think? All right, Fox News alert this morning. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg feeling bad. Yeah, feeling bad for caving to the Biden Harris White House, who he admits pressured him and his company into censoring COVID content. Zuckerberg writing, quote, in 2021, senior officials at the Biden administration, including those from the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 related content, including humor, satire and express significant frustration when we did not meet their demands. I believe the government pressure was wrong and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. GOP Congresswoman Laurel Lee sits on the House Judiciary Committee and this is a big moment for her. What do you take from this uh, this this confession. Well, first and foremost, this is a great victory for the First Amendment for Mr. Zuckerberg to come out and acknowledge that information was suppressed uh, about COVID. Everything when we saw President Trump and people like Governor DeSantis trying to share information with the public about the efficacy of therapeutics, about lockdowns and whether they were working, you know, at the time they were vilified and information from people who had opinions was suppressed. And to see Mr. Zuckerberg acknowledging this is really important. It shows the lengths that the Biden administration went to try to shut this information down. And the other thing that he mentions in this letter that's really critical is an acknowledgement that the Hunter Biden laptop story was suppressed. And that's something that we have spent so much time in judiciary working on and trying to bring to light is that we have 51 intelligence officers basically lie to the American people and try to cast this as Russian disinformation when it wasn't. And that information was suppressed in the lead up to the election. Uh, so it's very important for us to be able to show, mm. you know, these are the real facts of what was going on then and the links to which this administration was going to try to hold back this information from the American people. But remember, when the laptop was out there, President Trump was president. So somehow the challenging party had more sway with our, the FBI and other agencies than the one in power, which is bizarre. Uh, meanwhile, the White House just given us this statement on this. When confronted with a deadly pandemic, this administration encouraged responsible actions to protect public health and safety. And, your, and our position has been clear and consistent. We believe tech companies and our private actors should take into account their effects their actions have on the American people while making independent choices about the information they present. So if you bring up something like ivermectin, that's being irresponsible. In whose eyes? In, in, a, in some officials' eyes? In other people's eyes, it didn't. That's the big question. If you went against what they thought was right, then you're wrong until further notice. That's a bad precedent. It absolutely is. I and mean, the whole idea of the First Amendment is that it allows us to express contrary sure. ideas, to bring those out into the public square and let the public get to the bottom of what's the correct information. And what's worse, history tells the story. And we now know what the data shows us about the fact that there were effective therapeutics, the fact that it was appropriate to be prioritizing seniors and the vulnerable. So, you know, not only was mm -hmm. it wrong for them to try to suppress opposing viewpoints, the actual data that we now have related to the pandemic demonstrates that these positions they were suppressing, that many of them were actually correct and that the public would have benefited from having them out there and getting the option to make their own choices. Yeah. Now we know a lot of the so-called facts were wrong. Yesterday, you went over to yeah. Butler, Pennsylvania, because you're a member of the task force investigating the assassination attempt. Uh, and that is the site of the assassination attempt on uh, Donald Trump. Uh, you haven't received everything you've requested. Your whole committee hasn't. They've requested documents from the DHS, from the FBI, and others. So what was your takeaway from what you saw physically there and from what you expected to see? One of the really key things about going to the site and seeing it is that you get the sense of exactly how small it is. This is not a large area. It's very rural. Uh, even as a layperson, it's clear what the buildings are, what's in the area, and what needs to be secured. So it really underscores just how inexplicable this catastrophic security failure was uh, that this was allowed to happen. The other thing that is clear is that there were serious communication and coordination problems. 
homes. Uh, state and local law enforcement are a big part of securing a site like this, of securing a rally. Uh, but it is evident mm. from the investigation that we've been conducting already that there was a right. lack of communication and a lack of coordination. So one of the things we want to be sure we do is understand how that fell apart, because that's a key right. element to ensuring that this doesn't happen for future and, and, rallies and the, while these protectees are still out on the trail. And Congress can win over time, but we know nothing about the assassin. We, why did they have to quickly cremate the body? We don't know how he made the IEDs. You, they, they, they say, intelligence experts say, they still haven't unencrypted his, uh, his, uh, his tech devices. Well, that's and that is the key information that is is missing that we're still needing to develop from our from the FBI from Secret Service is you know, who was this kid? What was his motivation? Uh, did he work alone? Right. Did he work with someone else? You know, that's what we're still missing as we're trying to pull information from that phone. So right. in the coming weeks, that will be one of the key focuses of the committee. I wish people were more curious uh, like you guys are. Congresswoman, thanks so much.